a duke most desirable. Chapter 1 The season promised to be a lovely one. Outside the window, Lydia could see flowers blooming and neatly trimmed trees swaying in the wind. The world invited her out, as if it had decided to throw a ball to rival the ones in town. Despite the lovely morning, Lydia felt neither excitement nor hope. In fact, she was ruminating on a melancholy reminder of days past. She would have continued to sit in silence if her mother had not interrupted. Honestly, Diana, this dreadful atmosphere will give me indigestion. Lady St. Clair frowned and slid her teacup onto its saucer. I do not understand your determination to stagnate. Diana sighed and took up her teacup. I apologise, Mother. I do not mean to upset you. You might have fooled me. Lady St. Clair raised an eyebrow, her eyes sharp as she pinned her daughter with a stony gaze. There is no reason for your demeanour to be so horrible, especially not when you have taken it upon yourself. I did not mean to become a spinster, Diana replied. She despised the word almost as much as the conversation she was currently having. It was so rude. No one had called her as much to her face, but Diana knew her reputation among social circles. Most questioned her lack of interest in being pursued. Other more unkind women speculated that she was a mistress. None of it was true, of course. Diana kept the truth to herself, like the petals of a flower she kept pressed in her diary. The flower had long since dried nearly to dust, but she still turned the pages to look at it. Lady St. Clair scoffed quietly. Well, you certainly did not make much of an attempt to rectify your situation. Mother, please, I was... You were waiting. I was, Diana insisted, a small seed of resentment blooming in her chest. I was in love. She still was, or so she believed. She felt the same weight in her heart, though it had since become an ache dulled with time. Love, Lady St. Clair muttered. She shook her head and pushed her teacup away. It was a wonder the contents did not spill. I do not know where you developed this fascination with the concept. You and father love one another. Diana stared down at the table. She had heard this argument in her mind a hundred times over. It never concluded positively. Lady St. Clair was unwavering. Certainly, but you are sorely mistaken if you believe we were wildly in love when we were married. Weren't you? Diana challenged. Mother, please, you knew one another for years. You even kept a book of letters he sent you. I thought I had taught you better, Lady St. Clair said gravely, but I see I am mistaken. Diana's hands curled in her skirts. She had hoped to sway her mother to her side, but the years had worn her thin. Diana's mother had entertained the concept of waiting for a year, but by the second she had doubted. Diana could not blame her mother. Even she had worried after the first year, after there were no letters and no word of a return date. I am only speaking the truth, Diana said quietly. Perhaps. Yet you fail to remember that my marriage was one of chance. It was luck that wed me to your father, Lady St. Clair said evenly. Do not imagine that we eloped as the lower classes might, or that we stood against centuries of conduct to be together. Diana fell silent as she stared into the teacup before her. The contents were as murky as her heart felt. She could not untangle her thoughts about the love she had lost or the pain she still felt. After so many years, she should have forgotten. Five years apart was more time than she had known the man of her dreams, and she was acutely aware of the fact. It is too late to argue about this, Diana finally said, I pledged that I would wait, and I have. It was a foolish thing to do, Lady St. Clair said quietly. You knew nothing as you still do. There is time yet to find you a suitable husband. Is there? Diana shook her head and turned her teacup. The contents were likely cold already. I do not think there are any men of my station willing to marry a woman of my age. 
You appear young yet. Lady St. Clair pursed her lips before standing, finished with the charade of breakfast. This is a discussion for another time. See to it that you do not pledge yourself to any other men while I attempt to save what is left of your reputation. Diana was silent as she watched her mother leave. Her tea was as cold as she thought it would be and she abandoned it to stand by the window. If she looked closely, Diana could imagine she was young again. Just debuted a flower in spring, her eyes drawn to a handsome young man with a pleasant smile. On the anniversary of his departure, nothing stung more than the memory. Did you ever wish to return to me? She asked the silent room. Or was it all a lie? Diana received no more answer than she had received to the countless prayers she'd uttered over the years. She drew away from the window, silent, and promised herself to forget. If she even could. Lord Arthur Hyatt. For the first time in years, Arthur found himself on dry land, even as he stood in place. He imagined he could feel the ground shifting like the boards of a ship. He wondered if the world would ever stop rocking for him. Home again. Arthur could recognise the facade of his family estate. But the journey from the docks had been peppered with new shops and scenery he did not recognise. It felt good to be somewhere that had not changed. Arthur entered the hall of his family's home to silence. There was no great fanfare, but he could hear someone in the drawing room. They approached the door until suddenly he found himself facing his mother. Arthur, she gasped, her eyes shining with joy and relief. Oh, my son. Arthur carefully accepted his mother's hug. Her eyes were teary. You are just as I remember you, he said kindly. Certainly you are as gentle, mother. Do not weep. I am home. Yes, but I have not seen you in years, she replied, a sigh escaping her. Forgive your mother for her sentimentality. I have feared for you since you set foot on the dock. There was no cause to fret, Arthur said patiently. I am perfectly capable of looking after myself. I have no doubt. Lady Hyatt shook her head. But that is quite enough. I am sure you would like to sit. Arthur followed his mother into the drawing room. He felt as if at any moment the walls around him would change and he would be left standing in a house he did not recognise. There was only one conspicuous absence that stirred Arthur's suspicion. He kept his questions to himself until he was seated with his mother in the drawing room, the curtains drawn to let the light in. Where is father? Arthur paused, considering his words. I did not expect he would meet me at the docks, but I assumed he would be here. Lady Hyatt sighed. He was called away on business early this morning. He meant to be home to greet you. I understand, Arthur replied. Even as he spoke the words, he felt a twinge of despair. Five years away from home had shown him how precious his family was. He really did want to be here, Lady Hyatt said quietly. I only hope he returns soon. Arthur did not have to formulate a proper reply. The distant sound of the door opening and words being exchanged caught Arthur's attention. He recognised the sound of his father's shoes approaching and Arthur nearly felt like a child again. The footsteps stopped in the doorway. Arthur stood to greet his father, a sense of peace flooding him as he saw the man. It was as if the world was perfectly righted. There he is, Lord Hyatt abruptly entered. He extended a hand to his son once he was close enough, his grip firm on Arthur's arm. My son. Father. Arthur smiled. I have returned. I hope that in my absence I have honoured the family name. I believe that you have done your utmost to do so, Lord Hyatt replied. He was a quiet man with a worn and grey countenance, but there was wisdom and strength in his gaze. A sense of disquiet washed over Arthur. He could see more lines on his father's face than he remembered, and he was keenly aware of how much time had passed and how much his parents had aged. 
all around Arthur were reminders of the passage of time. The world had continued without him, and he had come back to find it changed. There are matters we must speak of, Lord Hyatt said. Matters of business and marriage. Arthur froze, his hand suspended halfway through the air. Marriage? Of course. Lord Hyatt sighed and moved to the nearby window, examining the scenery. It is only natural. Your departure was unfortunately abrupt, but there is still time. I appreciate that. Arthur fished for words. He was at a loss, his father's sudden declaration ringing in his ears. Is that of the utmost importance at this time? Of course, Lord Hyatt said calmly. You are a bachelor entering the later years of your marriageable life. It would be wise for you to do this now. We would have seen you married before you left, Lady Hyatt admitted, but there was not enough time. It was the first that Arthur had heard of any intentions toward marriage. He could not think of anything fitting to say to his parents. Of course, Arthur's thoughts turned to the woman he had left behind, the sweetheart whose rosy countenance he had thought of when he was away. He would close his eyes and remember her lovely dark hair and soft blue eyes. The way she had blushed when she turned her gaze from his face. I'm not averse to it, Arthur finally admitted, though perhaps we may speak of this once I have rested. Of course, Lady Hyatt gasped, suddenly approaching her husband to place a cautioning hand on his arm. It must have been such a journey for you. Your room has been made up, of course. Thank you. Arthur nearly sighed in relief. He had only been home for a few hours, but he felt more exhausted than he had felt in some months when he was away. Lord Hyatt nodded shortly. We will speak later, then. There is much to arrange. Of course, Arthur hesitated, unsure of whether he should say more. He wanted to explain his hesitancy to marry, but it would require admitting the love he still remembered from before he had left. Arthur did not think either of his parents expected that he would have held to the same woman he had left behind. They likely thought it had been a childish romance, or one lacking true substance and devotion. Lady Hyatt smiled reassuringly. You should rest now. There will be plenty of time to speak later, and I would like you to escort me out in two days' time. Yes, I would like that very much, Arthur replied. He would have time to speak with his mother then, and perhaps she would have the information he sought about his former sweetheart. Good. Lady Hyatt took Arthur's hands in hers. Rest. In the morning we will have breakfast and speak about the future. The future was uncertain, but Arthur did not say as much. He simply smiled and bid his parents farewell before he left the drawing room, the exhaustion of his journey weighing suddenly on his shoulders. Arthur wondered if his books were still in order, and if there was still a flower pressed into the pages of his favourite book. He hoped it was true, but he was too tired to check when he reached his room. He resolved to look in the morning, and then he lay down and closed his eyes, surrendering to the sweet silence of sleep. Chapter One The season promised to be a lovely one. Outside the window, Lydia could see flowers blooming and neatly trimmed trees swaying in the wind. The world invited her out, as if it had decided to throw a ball to rival the ones in town. Despite the lovely morning, Lydia felt neither excitement nor hope. In fact, she was ruminating on a melancholy reminder of days past. She would have continued to sit in silence if her mother had not interrupted. Honestly, Diana... This dreadful atmosphere will give me indigestion. Lady St. Clair frowned and slid her teacup onto its saucer. I do not understand your determination to stagnate. Diana sighed and took up her teacup. I apologise, Mother. I do not mean to upset you. You might have fooled me. Lady St. Clair raised an eyebrow, her eyes sharp as she pinned her daughter with a stony gaze. There is no reason for your demeanour to be so horrible, especially not when you have taken it upon yourself. I did not mean to become a spinster, Diana replied. 
She despised the word almost as much as the conversation she was currently having. It was so rude. No one had called her as much to her face, but Diana knew her reputation among social circles. Most questioned her lack of interest in being pursued. Other more unkind women speculated that she was a mistress. None of it was true, of course. Diana kept the truth to herself, like the petals of a flower she kept pressed in her diary. The flower had long since dried nearly to dust, but she still turned the pages to look at it. Lady St. Clair scoffed quietly. Well, you certainly did not make much of an attempt to rectify your situation. Mother, please, I was... You were waiting. I was, Diana insisted, a small seed of resentment blooming in her chest. I was in love. She still was, or so she believed. She felt the same weight in her heart, though it had since become an ache dulled with time. Love, Lady St. Clair muttered. She shook her head and pushed her teacup away. It was a wonder the contents did not spill. I do not know where you develop this fascination with the concept. You and father love one another. Diana stared down at the table. She had heard this argument in her mind a hundred times over. It never concluded positively. Lady St. Clair was unwavering. Certainly, but you are sorely mistaken if you believe we were wildly in love when we were married. Weren't you? Diana challenged. Mother, please, you knew one another for years. You even kept a book of letters he sent you. I thought I had taught you better, Lady St. Clair said gravely, but I see I am mistaken. Diana's hands curled in her skirts. She had hoped to sway her mother to her side, but the years had worn her thin. Diana's mother had entertained the concept of waiting for a year, but by the second she had doubted. Diana could not blame her mother. Even she had worried after the first year. After there were no letters and no word of a return date. I am only speaking the truth, Diana said quietly. Perhaps. Yet you fail to remember that my marriage was one of chance. It was luck that wed me to your father, Lady St. Clair said evenly. Do not imagine that we eloped as the lower classes might, or that we stood against centuries of conduct to be together. Diana fell silent as she stared into the teacup before her. The contents were as murky as her heart felt. She could not untangle her thoughts about the love she had lost, or the pain she still felt. After so many years, she should have forgotten. Five years apart was more time than she had known the man of her dreams, and she was acutely aware of the fact. It is too late to argue about this, Diana finally said. I pledged that I would wait, and I have. It was a foolish thing to do, Lady St. Clair said quietly. You knew nothing as you still do. There is time yet to find you a suitable husband. Is there? Diana shook her head and turned her teacup. The contents were likely cold already. I do not think there are any men of my station willing to marry a woman of my age. You appear young yet. Lady St. Clair pursed her lips before standing, finished with the charade of breakfast. This is a discussion for another time. See to it that you do not pledge yourself to any other men while I attempt to save what is left of your reputation. Diana was silent as she watched her mother leave. Her tea was as cold as she thought it would be and she abandoned it to stand by the window. If she looked closely, Diana could imagine she was young again. Just debuted a flower in spring, her eyes drawn to a handsome young man with a pleasant smile. On the anniversary of his departure, nothing stung more than the memory. Did you ever wish to return to me? She asked the silent room. Or was it all a lie? Diana received no more answer than she had received to the countless prayers she'd uttered over the years. She drew away from the window, silent, and promised herself to forget if she even could. Lord Arthur Hyatt. For the first time in years, Arthur found himself on dry land, even as he stood in place. He imagined he could feel the ground shifting like the boards of a ship. 
He wondered if the world would ever stop rocking for him. Home again. Arthur could recognise the facade of his family estate. But the journey from the docks had been peppered with new shops and scenery he did not recognise. It felt good to be somewhere that had not changed. Arthur entered the hall of his family's home to silence. There was no great fanfare, but he could hear someone in the drawing room. They approached the door until suddenly he found himself facing his mother. Arthur, she gasped, her eyes shining with joy and relief. Oh, my son. Arthur carefully accepted his mother's hug. Her eyes were teary. You are just as I remember you, he said kindly. Certainly you are as gentle, mother. Do not weep. I am home. Yes, but I have not seen you in years, she replied, a sigh escaping her. Forgive your mother for her sentimentality. I have feared for you since you set foot on the dock. There was no cause to fret, Arthur said patiently. I am perfectly capable of looking after myself. I have no doubt. Lady Hyatt shook her head. But that is quite enough. I am sure you would like to sit. Arthur followed his mother into the drawing room. He felt as if at any moment the walls around him would change and he would be left standing in a house he did not recognise. There was only one conspicuous absence that stirred Arthur's suspicion. He kept his questions to himself until he was seated with his mother in the drawing room, the curtains drawn to let the light in. Where is father? Arthur paused, considering his words. I did not expect he would meet me at the docks, but I assumed he would be here. Lady Hyatt sighed. He was called away on business early this morning. He meant to be home to greet you. I understand, Arthur replied. Even as he spoke the words, he felt a twinge of despair. Five years away from home had shown him how precious his family was. He really did want to be here, Lady Hyatt said quietly. I only hope he returns soon. Arthur did not have to formulate a proper reply. The distant sound of the door opening and words being exchanged caught Arthur's attention. He recognised the sound of his father's shoes approaching, and Arthur nearly felt like a child again. The footsteps stopped in the doorway. Arthur stood to greet his father, a sense of peace flooding him as he saw the man. It was as if the world was perfectly righted. There he is, Lord Hyatt abruptly entered. He extended a hand to his son once he was close enough, his grip firm on Arthur's arm. My son. Father. Arthur smiled. I have returned. I hope that in my absence I have honoured the family name. I believe that you have done your utmost to do so, Lord Hyatt replied. He was a quiet man with a worn and grey countenance, but there was wisdom and strength in his gaze. A sense of disquiet washed over Arthur. He could see more lines on his father's face than he remembered, and he was keenly aware of how much time had passed and how much his parents had aged. All around Arthur were reminders of the passage of time. The world had continued without him, and he had come back to find it changed. There are matters we must speak of, Lord Hyatt said. Matters of business and marriage. Arthur froze, his hand suspended halfway through the air. Marriage? Of course. Lord Hyatt sighed and moved to the nearby window, examining the scenery. It is only natural. Your departure was unfortunately abrupt, but there is still time. I appreciate that. Arthur fished for words. He was at a loss, his father's sudden declaration ringing in his ears. Is that of the utmost importance at this time? Of course, Lord Hyatt said calmly. You are a bachelor entering the later years of your marriageable life. It would be wise for you to do this now. We would have seen you married before you left, Lady Hyatt admitted, but there was not enough time. It was the first that Arthur had heard of any intentions toward marriage. He could not think of anything fitting to say to his parents. Of course, Arthur's thoughts turned to the woman he had left behind, 
the sweetheart whose rosy countenance he had thought of when he was away. He would close his eyes and remember her lovely dark hair and soft blue eyes. The way she had blushed when she turned her gaze from his face. I'm not averse to it, Arthur finally admitted, though perhaps we may speak of this once I have rested. Of course, Lady Hyatt gasped, suddenly approaching her husband to place a cautioning hand on his arm. It must have been such a journey for you. Your room has been made up, of course. Thank you. Arthur nearly sighed in relief. He had only been home for a few hours, but he felt more exhausted than he had felt in some months when he was away. Lord Hyatt nodded shortly. We will speak later, then. There is much to arrange. Of course, Arthur hesitated, unsure of whether he should say more. He wanted to explain his hesitancy to marry, but it would require admitting the love he still remembered from before he had left. Arthur did not think either of his parents expected that he would have held to the same woman he had left behind. They likely thought it had been a childish romance, or one lacking true substance and devotion. Lady Hyatt smiled reassuringly. You should rest now. There will be plenty of time to speak later, and I would like you to escort me out in two days' time. Yes, I would like that very much, Arthur replied. He would have time to speak with his mother then, and perhaps she would have the information he sought about his former sweetheart. Good. Lady Hyatt took Arthur's hands in hers. Rest. In the morning we will have breakfast and speak about the future. The future was uncertain, but Arthur did not say as much. He simply smiled and bid his parents farewell before he left the drawing room, the exhaustion of his journey weighing suddenly on his shoulders. Arthur wondered if his books were still in order, and if there was still a flower pressed into the pages of his favourite book. He hoped it was true, but he was too tired to check when he reached his room. He resolved to look in the morning, and then he lay down and closed his eyes surrendering to the sweet silence of sleep. Chapter Two Once again, Diana found herself reminiscing on a beautiful morning. The flowers in the park were in bloom, and each one she saw reminded her of sweeter days. Diana was in the company of her good friend, Ellen Lilly. Miss Lilly was younger than Diana, but her maturity and resistance to rumour made her a wonderful friend. Miss Lily was keen on listening, but she never participated in the gossip that went around women's circles. So your mother has once again impressed upon you the importance of marriage? Miss Lily asked, her gloved hand twirling the parasol she held between them. Diana nearly sighed. It was exhausting just to think about conversations with her mother. She did. It is a yearly occurrence. I'm not overly concerned. You should be. Miss Lily replied, surprised. It has been so long, Diana. You are of the same mind as her, Diana asked, incredulous. Perhaps you should be spending time with my mother rather than myself, then. Miss Lily shook her head. I mean, you no disrespect, Diana. But you must know what your situation appears to be. Perhaps I need to be reminded, Diana said stiffly. Miss Lily sighed. You are going to be a spinster for the remainder of your life if you do not find a suitable husband. Diana was quiet. She knew Miss Lily spoke the truth, as harsh and undesirable as the truth was. Diana was not averse to spending her life alone, though the concept sounded less appealing as the years passed. Diana's situation was not one she had ever anticipated. She had assumed she would be married young and she had prepared herself for the day it would happen. Never did Diana expect that she would be walking with a woman three years her junior who was engaged, while Diana was not. I did not mean for this to happen, Diana said quietly. I thought... I know, Miss Lily said reassuringly. Your great romance. How young were you? Nineteen. It was more than a childish infatuation. Diana insisted. He was an absolute gentleman, and I expected him to propose. 
Diana had told Miss Lily about it in great detail many times. The breathless joy of debuting, coupled with the appearance of a dashing suitor, had made Diana's 19th year a whirlwind. She had floated through the year in a haze of enchantment and excitement. The dream had not lasted. Diana's suitor had been called away to duty, and Diana was left to await his return. Despite the years of silence and no word of the man's return, she had not wavered yet. I do not doubt the depths of your emotion, Miss Lily said patiently. She paused under the shade of a tree and allowed a couple to pass them. Only your inexperience at the time. I am aware, but even when I have been introduced to other men at balls and parties, none have been quite like him, Diana explained. Miss Lily frowned. You are comparing them to the ghost of a man you have harboured for years. Does that not seem unfair to you? It was not a ghost, Diana wanted to explain. There were many exchanges she'd shared with her sweetheart, all proper and polite. She knew him, and she knew there was little hope of finding someone else who could rival him. Perhaps, Diana finally admitted. But I do not think I will ever find someone who could replace him. Miss Lily sighed. She took Diana's arm and drew them back toward the path. I do not disagree. But all young love is bittersweet, and in most cases it ends. I do not want it to end, Diana confessed. Of course you do not. Miss Lily patted Diana's arm. No one ever wishes it would end. But you will not be able to continue this way, Diana. You will never truly live if you continue to wait for this man. I just wish he would send me a letter. Anything, Diana said, her heart twisting hopelessly. Even if it were to tell me he has found a new life. Thank you for watching. Before we continue into the story, do us a favor like this video and hit the subscribe button because it helps very much with YouTube's algorithm. Thank you again. Now back to our story. Miss Lily was quiet for a long moment. Diana feared what her friend would say, but she had heard enough vicious rumours to strengthen her resolve. It was only now, on the anniversary of her first meeting with her sweetheart, that Diana felt things more keenly. Each whisper against her absent lover seemed crueler than it did any other time of year. Have you considered that he might not be capable of answering? Miss Lily finally asked. I do not mean to upset you, but after so much time without word, I do not think of it. I could not. Diana had thought once what she might feel if she were told that her love had been taken from her, that he had crossed a threshold over which she could not follow. It was difficult enough to suffer the questions about his swift departure and silence but it was worse to torment herself with dark imaginings of what could have happened to him. I am sorry, Miss Lily said quickly. I should not have said anything. It is nothing I have not been told before, Diana replied wearily. I have thought as much in my darker moments. Miss Lily nervously twirled her parasol. Really, though, she began hesitantly. I do not wish to upset you further, but I am worried for you. Whatever for? I am content, Diana declared. The words were bitter on her tongue. I have all that I need to be secure in life. My parents love me, and I have you as a friend. Oh, Diana, you are not truly living, Miss Lily insisted. I know you are a wonderful, lovely woman. You would be such a beautiful wife. Diana often wondered what her life would have been like if she had married her sweetheart, if he had not been called away just as she imagined he was going to propose. Thoughts about an unlived life only served to cause Diana more pain. She knew she would forever compare her dreams to reality. I have avoided marriage because I do not wish to cause undue pain, Diana finally admitted, hushed. I would not be an unworthy wife. How on earth could you be? Miss Lily cried. I would always think of how each moment could have happened with another man, Diana explained. 
I could not honour my husband when my thoughts would constantly turn to a man who holds my heart and memories. Miss Lily sighed. I cannot decide whether you are honourable or foolish, Diana. Then settle for honourable, Diana said, laughing tiredly. I have been called foolish enough by my mother. Over the years, Diana had learned well just how foolish her fervent dedication to a lover long lost was. After two years of awaiting his return, she had discovered just how much she had hurt herself with the promise. Even despite her recognition of the truth, Diana could not bring herself to give up the man of her dreams. Too many sweet words had been exchanged between them, and her heart was too intertwined with his memory. Perhaps we can find a way to remedy the situation, Miss Lily mused, patting Diana's arm reassuringly. You do not have to marry immediately, but perhaps there is a man quite like yours who will help sway your heart. I'm not sure how well that would work, Diana replied sceptically. My mother tried well enough to introduce me to suitable young men years ago. Well, she is your mother, Miss Lily said delicately. I am your friend. I would hope I have a more well-rounded idea of what inquiries to make. Diana laughed. Despite the sombre note their walk had begun on, Miss Lily had turned the morning around. As always, Diana was immensely grateful for Miss Lily's counsel. As serious as Miss Lily was, she had enough cheer to turn things around. Perhaps Miss Lily was right. Diana was reluctant to loosen her grip on the sweet memories of her youth, but time had taken a toll on her constitution, even if she never found a man worthy of taking her lover's place. At least she could try. I will try to enter the arena with dignity, Diana said. It has been some time, and I am aware just how my charms have been worn away. Nonsense, Miss Lily replied calculatedly. You do not look much older than myself, and your countenance is just as bright as ever. Well, that is a relief. Diana shook her head though I think it is known well enough just what age I am. Plenty of sisters and mothers will warn their dear brothers and sons. Miss Lily waved a hand dismissively. Then it is their loss. Besides, a man of your calibre will not be so concerned with such details. Then it seems your task is that much more difficult indeed, Diana said, raising an eyebrow at her friend. Are you quite sure you wish to accept this challenge, Miss Lily? I would not wish it upon anyone. Miss Lily laughed. The sound was bright like bells and Diana had envied it at one time. The jealousy had faded quickly as Miss Lily was a devoted friend and an engaged woman. You do not give yourself enough credit, Miss Lily said quietly. I know you can move on with your life, Diana. You only need the courage to take the first step. Diana was humbled by her friend's confidence in her, but she was almost equally uncertain of its truth. Diana was assuredly stubborn, as her mother often complained, but she was reluctant to take a step away from her past. Accepting her lover's absence and pursuing happiness was something Diana would have to work for. She could not waver based on dreamy wishes for a life long past. I feel that I can face this task. With your support, Diana finally said. I do not think I have ever thanked you enough, Miss Lily. I am certain you have, Miss Lily said kindly, and a good friend requires no thanks. Although perhaps you will remember me when you marry an astonishingly wealthy man who finds your maturity compelling. Diana laughed. She doubted her prospects were good, but at least she could count on avoiding the rakes and uncouth young men who would have pursued her when she had first stepped into the ton. As Diana approached the entrance to the park with Miss Lily, she caught sight of a carriage nearby. It clearly held someone of importance, though Diana did not immediately recognise the crest. She paused at the gate to the park, curious. Miss Lily followed Diana's gaze. Oh my! I wonder who has come to grace the park with their presence. She giggled quietly. Perhaps it is a visiting prince here to sweep you away. Diana was only half listening. 
she watched a woman step out of the carriage, her proud countenance obscured in part by her carefully arranged hair. The man who stood on the sidewalk beside her retracted his hand to close the carriage door. As the man turned, Diana saw his face. Her heart thumped painfully and her mouth opened in a wordless cry. She felt nineteen again, a wide-eyed young woman enraptured by a gallant young man. He had the same statuesque features and the same golden, blonder hair. Through there was a faint dusting of stuply along his jaw. The sun had freckled his cheeks, and he looked stronger than Diana remembered, but it was him. It was Arthur, the man she had fallen in love with. Chapter 3 Despite his recent return, it seemed that Lady Hyatt had no intentions of allowing Arthur a moment's rest. Arthur did not begrudge his mother her excitement, but he found it tiring to accompany her on simple errands given his recent travel. Thankfully, Lady Hyatt decided to begin Wednesday with a visit to one of her acquaintances. She insisted on Arthur's presence, possibly as a means to introduce him to the man of the house. Lady Hyatt was thus suitably cheerful as she sat across from Arthur in the family's carriage. It's been some time since you have seen the edges, she said. I believe the last time was at a ball just before you left. It was. Arthur did not explain that he remembered because he had seen his sweetheart at the ball. His parents were not entirely aware of the courtship. Arthur had been nothing but proper with Diana, but they had been introduced through relatives. They had met so many times during the course of one year that Arthur had believed it divine intervention. His intention had been to marry Diana, but that had never come to pass. Arthur had left home, desperately wishing he could have married Diana first, and his passing thoughts had been occupied by her ever since. I hope you will not be so silent during the visit, Lady Hyatt said cheerfully. Her humorous remark was softened by the concern in her expression. Are you quite all right? Yes, of course, I'm sorry to worry you. Arthur attempted to smile. I was only thinking of the ball. It seems as if it was a lifetime ago. It practically was, Lady Hyatt murmured. You were not quite the man that you are now. Time had changed much. Arthur wished he could find a way back to what he had left behind. But he had no clue where to start. He had Diana's last name, but he was unsure how to make inquiries. Even worse, there was a lingering fear that Diana might have been married while Arthur was away. The thought gnawed at him as the carriage came to a halt, rocking softly. As Arthur looked out the window, he caught a glimpse of two women exiting the park. He imagined he recognised one of them, but at such a distance, he knew it was just his wishful mind. Arthur disembarked carefully and offered his hand to his mother. I do hope it is all right that I have brought you along, Lady Hyatt fretted. It was such a sudden change that I worried it would be rude to request an invitation. I'm sure it is not an issue, Arthur said patiently. He shut the carriage door behind his mother, still thinking about how he could find Diana. Besides, we are already here. If there are consequences, I will face them. Lady Hyatt laughed. She took her son's arm and followed him up the steps toward the house before them. Are you certain? It has been some time since you have been among the civilised. I do hope your manners have not suffered from being away. They have not. You taught me well, Arthur reassured her. He smiled and rang the bell at the front door. It was opened for him moments later, and he announced his mother. Arthur followed his mother as they were shown into the proper room, where a woman was already waiting. There was a younger woman with her also, her hands folded politely in her lap. It only took a moment for Arthur to realise the situation. He nearly said something to his mother, but he held his tongue at the last moment. The situation was clearly meant to introduce him to the young lady and Arthur 
was absolutely not interested in entertaining her. There you are, my dear friend, the woman in the room said, smiling as she rose from her seat. He belatedly recognised her as Mrs Edge. And this must be your son. Arthur Hyatt, he introduced himself, offering the proper bow. It is a pleasure to meet you. Charmed, I should not be surprised that you are a proper man, Mrs Edge replied, tugging at her gloves. She appeared ready to leave. Your mother speaks highly of you. It is her good influence that contributed to my upbringing, Arthur submitted. Mrs Edge laughed politely. Charming and respectful to your mother? Well, you will have no trouble returning to society. Arthur politely inclined his head. He was acutely aware of Mrs Edge's apparent intention to leave, and the indication worried him. He was not interested in being left alone with Mrs Edge's daughter and his mother. Well, shall we? Lady Hyatt suggested. The park looked lovely when we arrived. It always is this time of morning, Mrs Edge replied. Arthur nearly spoke in protest. Miss Edge's eyes had noticeably widened, but he detected a hint of excitement in her startled expression. Surely they will not leave us alone. Come now, Arthur, Lady Hyatt said suddenly. I believe you would do well to offer Miss Edge assistance with her parasol. Louisa. Mrs Edge's tone was sharp when she addressed her daughter. The young woman stood carefully, her gaze flickering to Arthur for a moment. Do pay attention. We are leaving now. Yes, mother. The last thing Arthur wanted was to walk in the park with a young woman he did not know, especially while his mother walked behind him to watch over the interaction. He would have preferred to stay at home. More than anything, Arthur wanted a moment alone to figure out how he was going to find Diana St. Clair. He glanced around the park gate as he approached it and wondered where the women he had seen before had gone. He wondered if the woman he had mistaken for Diana was perhaps a relative, and if he might find her and inquire after Diana. The weather is certainly lovely. Miss Edge spoke softly, and Arthur guiltily turned his attention to her. It is, Arthur agreed distractedly. He was unused to the expectation of making small talk, and he found himself lacking anything important to say. I have not been here since I was a child. Miss Edge did not seem to mind the triviality of the conversation. What a pity! The park is lovely in the summer. It must be. Arthur escorted Miss Edge toward the first path he saw, already wondering how long his mother expected to stay. There was little to interest Arthur in the park. He had travelled enough to know what the world looked like. Now that he was home, his only interest was finding the love he had left behind. Arthur had never particularly cared to rush marriage. But when he had met Miss St. Clair, he had immediately changed his mind. She had been keen, vibrant and lovely. The flower he had secretly given her at a garden party had been the greatest symbol of his love. I suppose you must be thrilled to return home. Miss Edge ventured. Very much so. Arthur looked away for a moment, a passing figure catching his eye. Once he turned, he knew it was not Diana. The disappointment he felt was stinging. Miss Edge persisted. My mother tells me we must have met. Many years ago. A ball, I think she said it was. Yes, I believe so. Suddenly a thought came to mind. Arthur schooled his voice and carefully explained. I seem to remember being introduced by a friend at some point to someone, a Miss St. Clair, I believe. Oh, Miss Edge did not seem interested by the confession. What an odd thing to remember. It was a unique name, Arthur replied. I do not suppose you happen to know her. I am afraid not. Miss Edge did not seem particularly bothered by her lack of knowledge. Arthur had not hoped for much, but the disappointment was still tiring. 
he supposed it could not be so simple to find his way back to the woman he had loved so deeply. The flowers that lined the park's pathway only served to remind Arthur of the ball, when he had promised Diana that he held only the most honourable intentions. He had planned to speak to his parents that night about marrying her, but his plans were lost. Well, the past is gone, Miss Edge said suddenly. You have a fantastic opportunity to create a new life, do you not? Perhaps. Arthur did not explain that he could not start anew yet. Not without trying to discover whether the woman he had left behind was still waiting for him. For a moment, Arthur thought he noticed disappointment and impatience in Miss Edge's countenance. He dismissed it as his own. He was, after all, more interested in pursuing his desires than escorting a woman he did not know through a park. It was unfair to Miss Edge, he knew. Yet Arthur desperately wanted to excuse himself in favour of finding the elusive Miss Diana St. Clair. He worried that every passing moment was another that would convince her he was a rake and a liar if she did not believe so already. I believe it would be nice to return to the night of the ball, Miss Edge said primly. Perhaps then I could make a better impression. I am sure you did, Arthur said quickly. My pursuits for the past five years have left little time for fond reflection. I have forgotten much. Though not an odd last name, Miss Edge remarked. She was more forward than Arthur expected, and he wondered if it was simply his experience that coloured his reaction. Arthur shook his head. It will take some acclimation to fit into the place I occupied before. You will have no issue, I think. My estimation is that you are a true gentleman, Miss Edge said confidently. Arthur was unsure what to say. He felt as if he were out of his depth. Nothing about the exchange was like the words he had shared with Miss St. Clair. He settled for a simple, I am honoured. Whether Miss Edge was disappointed or not was a mystery, but Arthur did not mind. He was reminded again of how captivating Miss St. Clair had been, how her attention had seemed warm and pure. Arthur had never believed in true love, as some of his cousins had giggled about when they were children. He had not believed until he met Miss St. Clair, whose beauty and grace had so utterly charmed him that he found it impossible to forget her. Perhaps this was an inopportune occasion for a meeting, Miss Edge said, suddenly slowing to a halt. Arthur frowned as he matched Miss Edge's pace. Miss Edge? Lord Hyatt, I appreciate that you have humoured me this morning, but it seems to me that you would rather be elsewhere or retiring to your quarters. Well, it was not my intention to be rude, Arthur replied, uncertain. He did not think he had said anything to the effect, but perhaps he had made a misstep along the way. Miss Edge smiled carefully. I understand. You must still be exhausted from your journey home. I hope that we might meet another time when you are perhaps recovered and attentive. Arthur was shocked by Miss Edge's remark. He could not look to his mother or Mrs Edge for direction in this setting. They were a few steps away and made no move to join the conversation. Arthur was certain he had not been rude, but Miss Edge was clear with her declaration. Then I suppose we will meet again. Arthur finally said. I wish you the best, Miss Edge. And you as well, Miss Edge said, tipping her head gently. We should return to the house now. Of course. Arthur led the way back toward the house, unease settling in his chest. If he could not carry a simple conversation with a young woman, he feared he would be entirely undesirable to Miss St. Clair if he could even find her again. Arthur silently determined that he would do his utmost to prepare himself for meeting Miss St. Clair again. He would find her no matter the obstacles, and he would prove he had never forgotten her, not for a single day. Chapter 4 A day had passed since Diana had seen Arthur. She could not turn her mind from the thought of him standing before her, close enough that he might have answered if she had called his name. Miss Lily's insistence that Diana should move on was a suggestion that Diana could not believe in any longer. The pain of seeing Arthur again was too much. 
We are expecting guests, Lady St. Clair said, her tone severe. Where is your mind this morning? Diana looked up from the book she held in her lap. She had not read any of it since sitting down. Her mind was far too occupied by other things to allow her to concentrate. Yes, mother. Diana closed her book and slid it onto the table before her. She was in no mood to receive guests, but she had little choice. Lady St. Clair frowned. Whatever is the matter with you, you have been even more melancholy the past few days. Nothing, Diana said quickly. The last thing she wanted was another lecture from her mother about her foolishness. It is simply the heat. Well, I hope you find it in yourself to be pleasant, Lady St. Clair said. Our guests should be impressed. Besides, their son is accompanying them. Yes, mother. It was easier for Diana to agree. As much as she wished she could change the truth, it seemed that time had proven Diana's mother right. There was no hope. Diana could not believe that she had seen Arthur. She had lost sleep attempting to convince herself that it had not been him. Yet Diana knew Arthur's face well, and she was crushed by the realisation that he had returned without speaking to her. She wondered how long he had been back, and if he ever planned to speak to her. This will be good for you, Lady St. Clair announced, her expression pleased as she surveyed the room. Perhaps polite company will remind you of the benefits of society and marriage. I have no quarrel with either, Diana replied. Quite the opposite. You have not made much of an effort to pursue either in the last few years, Lady St. Clair reminded Diana. She sighed and suddenly sank into a nearby chair, weary. Diana had been prepared to leave, but the abrupt change in her mother's mood gave her pause. Mother? I only wanted the best for you, Lady St. Clair said quietly. I hope you understand. I always tried to present you to the highest company at the most refined parties. Oh, mother! Diana crossed the room and sat by her mother. I'm sorry if it seems that I have been ungrateful. I never meant to be wasteful of the opportunity you have given me. Lady St. Clair smiled tiredly. Her eyes shone with unshed tears. Some distant emotion lingering at the memory of Diana's younger years. You are my lovely daughter, and I hope that I may see you happy some day. I am happy, Diana replied. She knew it was selfish to pine after her lost lover for much longer, especially after her recent discovery. If I have not accepted my station with grace, I will make an effort to do so in the future. Perhaps the sweetness of love had escaped Diana. She wished she could recapture the glowing days of her youth and the fervent dedication with which Arthur had pursued her. Five years since the romance had begun, Diana was now well aware that she had been foolish. How many other young women had been taken in by a dashing young man, only to be left weeping when their lovers never returned to them? As I said, our guests include a very honourable man, Lady St. Clair said. She carefully took Diana's hands in her own. Perhaps you will find his company agreeable. Perhaps. Diana did not wish to commit herself to a strange man she had never met, but she knew there were few options left to her. Lady St. Clair smiled reassuringly. You need not throw yourself at his feet. I only ask that you give marriage another chance. There may be a man for you yet. You are right. Diana smiled, but it felt tight on her lips. Strained like her heart and the fractured love she still felt. I will not complain any longer. I'm looking forward to guests at any rate. It has been too long since we have had any. You are precisely right. Lady St. Clair rose content with Diana's promises. She gathered herself as the sounds of an arrival echoed in the foyer. Diana rose as her mother approached the doorway to greet their guests. Her father was with them, his voice sonorous in the hall. Diana did not hold high hopes for the meeting, but for her mother's sake, she was determined to make the best of the situation. All thoughts of conduct and polite conversation disappeared as Diana watched the guests enter the drawing room. Even her father's voice drifted away as she watched a man and woman enter, a younger man following behind them. My daughter, 
Lord St. Clair said. Diana came to her senses quickly enough to enact a polite curtsy and reply, but she could not remember what she had said once the moment passed. Her eyes were on the man before her. Arthur Hyatt stood in the drawing room just as Diana had seen him one day ago. His golden hair was perfectly set, and he had the strong jaw and regal nose that had made Diana swoon when she had first met him. Aside from his handsome visage, there was something in Arthur Hyatt's piercing grey eyes. There was an intensity to his gaze, even when he only met Diana's gaze for a fraction of a moment. The simple exchange was enough to set Diana's heart pounding in her chest. Enchanted, Arthur said, and Diana nearly shook at the sound of his voice. The memories of his smile and kind words at the parties they had attended came back to her at once. Standing before Arthur Hyatt, Diana knew she could not forget him. Even despite all her fears about his lack of communication over the years he had been gone, Diana could not stand against the aching of her heart. Lord Arthur Hyatt. Arthur could not believe it was her. He was caught up in sudden memories of Miss St. Clair's lovely smile and the sweetness of her attention. She was like a butterfly preserved in amber to him, something beautiful that remained from his life before he had left. It was almost deceptively wonderful. Arthur harboured the steadying fear that perhaps Diana was now married or even engaged. He could not simply believe that things would be so perfect that they would meet again this way. Do come in, Lady St. Clair said. Arthur followed his parents into the room, though his gaze never left Diana. He wished he could speak to her directly, and he wished even more that he could call her by her first name. He remembered the moment he had learned it. I hear that you are recently returned, Lord St. Clair said. Arthur could not remember if the man had spoken any words previously. He had been too occupied with thoughts of his past. I am, he replied quickly. It is time I upheld my responsibilities. Of course, Lord St. Clair agreed. A distinguished man such as yourself will likely have no difficulty returning to the Torn. You have done a great service already. I have done my duty, Arthur replied honestly, as any honourable man should. Of course, Diana said. Arthur nearly fell from his chair to turn and look at her, but he managed to maintain his composure. Honourable men are very rare, but they are certainly impressive. Arthur paused a moment. He was unsure whether to receive the remark as a compliment or a veiled insult. He knew that she likely had many questions for him, and he wished he could speak to her privately about such matters. Well, I have heard much about you, Lady St. Clair announced. She smiled cautiously. I remember you as a child, but it has been some time since our families have spoken. Far too much time has passed, Arthur's mother agreed. It is such a pity. I regret that we fell out of contact for such a time. It truly is regrettable, Lady St. Clair said. Her gaze flicked to Arthur, a detail he did not miss. We were childhood friends, after all. It would have been lovely for our families to remain connected. Arthur was content to let the conversation shift. He was aware of the scrutiny he was under, but he risked another glance at Diana. It was nearly impossible to look away, but he needed a glimpse of her to sustain himself. Diana's beauty had not diminished in their time apart. She was just as radiant as ever, and Arthur longed to look upon her face for longer than a moment. Despite his excitement at seeing Diana once again, Arthur was worried by her lack of interest. She did not meet his eye, and she sat attentive to every word that was spoken. The West Park is lovely this time of year, Lady St. Clair said. Arthur turned his attention to the speakers just in time to hear the snatch of conversation. Lady Hyatt nodded politely. I have visited recently. It is truly beautiful. I prefer it for morning walks. It is certainly popular, Diana submitted. 
Arthur entered the conversation, hopeful that Diana would take the opportunity to speak with him indirectly. It certainly is, he agreed, though I much more often prefer the solitude of private gardens. Do you? Diana asked. I would think that you have missed society. Of course, to a degree, Arthur replied. He was thrilled by Diana's reply, despite her formal conversation. But I've always admired gardens. In my time away, I often reminisced on a garden party I attended as a young man. Garden parties are very in season this year, Lady Hyatt said. The conversation shifted, and Arthur regretted that the exchange had ended so quickly. He wanted to speak with Diana again simply to hear her melodious voice. In his years away, he had nearly forgotten it. Arthur hoped that he had communicated his wish to speak with Diana privately. He feared that Diana thought him a rake. He knew too well that he had likely lost her confidence with his lack of communication, but he could not have helped his silence. The only thing Arthur desired most in the world was to prove himself to Diana again and win her heart. He had thought of nothing else in his fleeting moments of peace when he was abroad, and upon seeing her again, he had been reminded why he had pursued her. I would certainly appreciate a visit. Lady Hyatt said. Arthur immediately began to listen once again, hopeful of the invitation's purpose. Lady St. Clair smiled politely. Of course. There is time after the Langford Ball. It will be wonderful to visit with you again. Arthur quietly held hope for the visit. He wanted nothing more than to see Diana again, and he hoped she would speak to him. His sole purpose was to prove his love to her. Duty was the only thing left for Arthur now that he had returned. The thought of Diana accompanying him as his wife through these years of his life filled him with hope. He would see that she understood his honourable intentions, no matter the lengths he had to go to. Chapter 5 The ball was in full motion as Diana stood with Miss Lily, her gaze scanning the crowd. Her heart thudded in her chest and she held her breath, desperately searching for a sign of Arthur. Diana had given up any pretense of acting as if she did not care about Arthur's return. The feelings she remembered from when they had first met remained, and seeing Arthur again had only rekindled them. Diana could not hope to fight them. I have not seen you so excited in some time, Miss Lily noted, her fan raised to cover her mouth. She leaned close as she added, though I do not fault you. I did not think I would ever see him again, Diana confessed quietly. I had given up hope entirely. The heartache I have experienced was complete. That much was easy to see, Miss Lily replied. It is incredible that he has returned to you. Even more incredible is that you did not realise he was a family friend. We only ever met at parties, Diana defended herself, though she felt silly that she had missed such a vital detail. And I was quite preoccupied when I met him. Miss Lily laughed. I am sure you were. From your description, I believe he must be a prince. Diana did not answer. Her attention turned to the other side of the room where Arthur had appeared. Her breath caught in her chest and she felt her cheeks flush. The second that Arthur's eyes met hers, Diana glanced away. Her pulse raced and she hoped it was not obvious how affected she was. Is he looking this way? He is. I believe he is approaching, Miss Lily whispered conspiratorially. I will enlist my cousin in this endeavour. Diana hardly paid attention to Miss Lily. She only had eyes for Arthur in stolen glances as she pretended to survey the gathered crowd. Miss Lily's cousin arrived before Arthur, politely speaking to Miss Lily as Diana awaited Arthur. Finally, Arthur came to stand before Diana. Miss Lily's cousin stepped forward to introduce himself, and Diana waited breathlessly for the introduction to conclude. Miss St. Clair, Arthur addressed Diana, his grey eyes intense. It has been too long. Indeed. Diana was aware that Miss Lily was keeping her cousin occupied, 
giving Diana some semblance of privacy, as much as she was afforded as a single woman. Have you only just arrived, Lord Hyatt? I have. I regret not arriving sooner, Arthur added, his voice lowered. I would have made it a priority if I realised you would be in attendance. Diana's heart skipped. She lifted her fan to cover her mouth, lowering her eyes. I am flattered, Lord Hyatt, though I am sure you have many more compelling matters to attend to. None so compelling as the beauty that stands before me, Arthur said. Diana could hardly believe his words. The gravity of his confession was potentially scandalous, and if anyone nearby had heard, Diana had no doubt the gossip would circulate by the end of the night. Despite the danger of their exchange, Diana was positively thrilled by Arthur's attention. She had forgotten the low baritone of his voice and the sweet words he so easily conjured. Diana wished she could hear even more. I'm truly honoured. Diana glanced at Miss Lily, careful to ensure she was still occupied with her cousin. There must be many here who would enjoy the pleasure of your company, given your extended absence. Perhaps. I will not shirk my duty, but it would be a grave mistake not to greet you first, Arthur said in a low voice. I could not neglect greeting you as soon as I learned you were in attendance. Incredible praise indeed, Diana replied. Arthur's mere presence was like a dream and his proclamations were just as unbelievable. At any moment, Diana expected to be rudely awakened. It could not be true that the man she loved would return to her, yet he stood before her now. Just at the moment she had given up, Arthur had returned, and he had not changed. The way Diana felt around Arthur had not changed either. It seemed even more impossible that Arthur had not turned away from her after five years. He could have pursued any woman, but he was interested in her. It has been some time since I have attended an event such as this, Arthur admitted, but I am glad that I did. As am I, Diana admitted, nervous at the admission. It has been quite some time for me as well. I fear I have done my mother a disservice. I doubt that, Arthur replied immediately. If I may be so bold, you do not strike me as a dishonourable woman, Miss St. Clair. You seem so certain. Diana paused, her nerves affecting her as she considered his words. Does he believe I've waited for him, or is he simply being polite? I am. Arthur's grey eyes seemed to pierce straight through Diana. She was nearly weak at his scrutiny. There is no question in my mind that you are a woman of incredible distinction, Miss St. Clair. Diana could not formulate an answer in time. Arthur's mother approached, and Diana held her tongue afraid that she had kept Arthur far too long. The last thing she wanted was to draw too much attention to herself or Arthur. There you are, dear, Lady Hyatt said. Do forgive me, ladies. Of course, Diana said, hoping her reply was neither too quick nor too suspicious. Lovely to see you, Lady Hyatt. You as well, Miss St. Clair. Diana watched Arthur leave, her pulse still rapid. She wished she could follow him or steal a quiet moment alone. Those things would never happen, however, and Diana was left wondering when she would see Arthur again. Despite the boundaries between them, Diana hoped Arthur would see fit to properly pursue her once again. Her dreams of a perfect future might not have passed her by completely, she realised, and the thought gave her peace she had not known in some time. Lord Arthur Hyatt. Arthur nearly turned to look over his shoulder at Diana. He had stopped short upon entering the room and seeing her standing at the far wall. Her beauty was immeasurable, and Arthur was filled with new resolve to secure her hand in marriage. The attraction that Arthur had recognised in his youth still flowered between them. Arthur could see it when Diana averted her eyes, and he could hear it in her replies. Unfortunately, the requirements of etiquette prevented Arthur from returning to Diana for the night. He followed his mother instead, wishing he could have spoken to Diana for just a few moments longer. 
You remember Miss Edge, Arthur's mother said. She had brought Arthur right to the young woman. Arthur knew well enough his mother's intentions. Despite the purity of her intentions, Arthur couldn't help but feel cheated. His thoughts were with Diana and the time he had lost with her in favour of a woman he hardly knew. Yes, it's good to see you, Miss Edge. Arthur would not be impolite, despite his awkward position. Miss Edge smiled prettily, her eyes lowered as she bowed her shoulders. Lord Hyatt, it seems spirits are high this evening. Certainly, though I have just arrived, Arthur said. Then I'm honoured to speak with you first this evening. Miss Edge's smile widened. Arthur was aware that his mother was not the only one politely arranging these visits with Miss Edge. He was also keenly aware of Miss Edge's interest. The polite thing to do would be to confront his mother privately. However, Arthur recognised a forwardness in Miss Edge that seemed best addressed if it continued. He did not want to give her the wrong impression. Especially since he had found Miss St. Clair once again. Well, I have greeted a few others, Arthur explained politely. Ah! Miss Edge's smile hardened a little. She glanced away, and Arthur wondered if she was looking in Miss St. Clair's direction. Then it is a pity I did not linger closer to the entrance. I would not wish to take up your time. Arthur replied carefully. He did not want to say too much or embarrass Miss Edge. She was likely quite desirable to many other men in attendance, and Arthur did not doubt her charms. His interest was simply elsewhere. Miss Edge immediately shook her head. It would never be a waste, she said firmly. There are few gentlemen as valiant as you, my mother says. It is an honour for me. Arthur doubted that Miss Edge's mother had said anything quite so dramatic. He attempted a neutral smile before turning to his mother, hoping to make his way across the room once again. Perhaps it would not be so risky to approach Diana again. Do excuse me, Arthur said, politely addressing Mrs Edge first. There are a few acquaintances in attendance that I should greet. I have been gone too long. Of course. Mrs. Edge said pleasantly. Enjoy your evening, Lord Hyatt. Arthur carefully offered his arm to his mother before leading her away. Once they were a distance away from Mrs. Edge and her daughter, Arthur's mother spoke. That was frightfully short, Lady Hyatt said. You did not insult the young lady, did you? Of course not, Arthur replied, shocked. Why on earth would you assume so? Lady Hyatt sighed. Oh, I do not think the worst of you, Arthur. You have simply been away so long and I worry for your future. I understand. Arthur carefully wove through the crowd toward his father, occasionally glancing toward Diana. I promise I will do my best to honour the family. I know you will, Lady Hyatt said, surprised. Arthur, are you attempting to rid yourself of me? Arthur was so surprised he could not form an immediate answer. His mother laughed quietly, her gaze merry as she left Arthur's side to join her husband. Let him have his fun, Lord Hyatt said good-naturedly. I believe he has earned one night of freedom for his services. Go then, Lady Hyatt said cheerfully. I will find you later in the evening. Arthur excused himself cautiously, unconvinced that his mother would give up so easily when it came to Miss Edge. Despite his reservations, however, he was determined to find Diana again. He had seen her lingering by the patio, and he hoped he could approach her. When Arthur finally made his way to the patio, he found Diana's mother engaged in conversation. He knew it was risky and potentially disastrous to approach Diana while her mother was present, but he could not help himself. Lady St. Clair, Arthur greeted Diana's mother once he noted a lull in her conversation. I hope you are enjoying the evening. Yes, it is quite lovely, Lady St. Clair replied, inclining her head politely. It is a pleasant surprise to see you once again. Arthur turned his attention to Diana. Miss St. Clair, he greeted her, it is a pleasure. 
Diana bowed her shoulders. Lord Hyatt. Arthur isn't Duke yet, so he should always be introduced as Lord Hyatt. Lady St. Clair was distracted once again by her conversation partner. Arthur silently thanked God for what must have been divine intervention that momentarily drew Lady St. Clair's attention away from Arthur and Diana. I could not have made my way to you sooner, Arthur said quietly. Diana's eyes widened at the confession. Arthur feared that perhaps he had gone too far. But suddenly, Diana spoke. I have awaited your return, she said, her voice trembling, and I have been true in your absence. I do not doubt it. Arthur glanced nervously at Lady St. Clair. Tell me that you still wish for what I promised when I left. What is it that you offer now? Diana's reply was nearly a whisper. The uncertainty in her question was clear. She was unsure whether to trust him fully. My intentions are honourable, Arthur replied confidently. I would properly seek your hand in marriage, as I meant to do before duty called me away. Diana finally looked up at Arthur. Her bright blue eyes radiated a joy and relief that were staggering in power. There is nothing more in this world that I desire. Lady St. Clair turned toward Arthur and Diana, her conversation abandoned in favour of listening in. Arthur stepped away carefully, content with the knowledge that Diana had remained steadfast in his absence. Excuse me, Lady St. Clair. Miss St. Clair. Arthur politely excused himself, his thoughts already turning toward his promise and when he could next see Diana again. This time Arthur would not allow anything to come between himself and Diana. He would make certain of it. Chapter 6 The days seemed brighter since Diana had been reunited with Arthur. She looked out the window in Miss Lily's sitting room, her eyes drawn to the flowers that lined the property. They reminded Diana of her last meeting with Arthur before he had left, when he had presented her with a flower and promised that she was the only one for him. For the first time in some time, Diana had accepted her friend's invitation to a small gathering of ladies. The drawing room was awash with sunlight from the windows, and the conversation drifted in parts as the women spoke about the latest fashions and polite gossip. You are positively distracted, Miss Lily said. Diana came to her senses and cast her friend an apologetic smile. Honestly, Diana, I cannot believe how transformed you are. Well, it is a mysterious and consuming affliction, Diana replied carefully. What is? Diana leaned in conspiratorially. Love, of course. Miss Lily's shocked expression nearly made Diana laugh. She held her joy in check, aware of the other women gathered in the room. She was not yet comfortable enough to announce her situation to anyone else. It was a risk to tell Miss Lily about it. But Diana knew her friend would never betray her. Miss Lily had been all too keen to listen to Diana's retelling of the ball, even if Diana had kept most of Arthur's declarations of love to herself. Well, Lord Hyatt has had such a positive effect on your mood that I cannot dispute it, Miss Lily replied. I can hardly believe how romantic it all is. It was a frightful gamble to wait for him. So I have been told, Diana said, amused. But I knew when I met him that he was a proper gentleman, and I knew that there was a devotion between us that could not be broken. At the very least he has returned and set his sights on you, Miss Lily noted. She followed Diana's gaze toward the window, a thoughtful sigh escaping her lips. You must have a spring wedding, Diana. It would be so beautiful. It would, Diana agreed quietly. Although she claimed confidence, Diana had worried that Arthur had been lost to her for some time. She had expected to never see him again in her lifetime, and she had been prepared to resign herself to loneliness and heartache. Although Arthur had returned and Diana readily believed him, there was still a part of her that doubted. Diana's mother had spoken so many negative words through the past five years that Diana found it hard not to hear them when she had a spare moment. 
I do hope he is prompt, Diana finally said. I agree that propriety must be maintained, but I fear that waiting will only invite disaster. Disaster? I am sure nothing will happen, Miss Lily replied, disturbed. She smoothed her skirts nervously. Do not use such ominous language. I am sorry, Diana said, attempting a smile. Do not listen to me. I am of a fretful disposition. Well, you should take confidence in Lord Hyatt's continued interest, Miss Lily replied sagely. Her expression was serious as she leaned closer. You know, he could have run off with any woman when he was away. He could have set his sights on a much younger debutante as well. Miss Lily was absolutely right. Yet Diana feared that Arthur was still perfectly capable of leaving her if he happened to change his mind in the slightest. Diana was aware she was past her prime. She was not the best choice of the many ladies she knew. Despite her past with Arthur, she feared that he would meet another young woman who would capture his attention. After all, five years had passed since Arthur had met Diana. Perhaps he would find himself no longer the same man. Well, you had best conduct yourself properly, Miss Lily said quietly. I worry that you will dishonour yourself if you accept his advances too quickly. I am not a young woman any more, Diana argued. I believe I have earned a reputation for level-headedness. Even the most steadfast of ladies is susceptible. Miss Lily reached for her tea, an eyebrow arched in an unimpressed curve. Yourself included. I dare say the conversation here seems far more compelling than the other side of the room, a young woman said suddenly. Diana looked up to see the newcomer, whose small hands daintily spread her skirts flat as she took a seat across from Diana and Miss Lily. She appeared quite young, perhaps recently debuted. There was a keen sharpness to her gaze that betrayed a greater truth beyond her girlish curls and rosy lips. Miss Edge, Miss Lily said, surprised. I seem to remember that you were otherwise occupied today. Ah, yes, Miss Edge sighed wistfully, her gaze turning toward the window. The effect was rather dramatic. I am uncertain whether I should tell you, as it is all very proper. Miss Lily raised her eyebrows and slid her teacup onto the table. By all means, we are not prone to gossip, Miss Edge. Your matters are safe. Diana had the distinct impression that Miss Edge was perhaps too interested in drama and attention. However, she did not begrudge the lady her cheerful intrigue. Miss Edge seemed harmless, and Diana was content to let her enjoy her youth. Well, my parents have seen fit to arrange proper introductions to a suitor, Miss Edge confessed. The satisfaction in her smile was unfettered. He is quite a distinguished man. That is wonderful for you, Lady Lily said politely. Diana knew her friend had hoped for more drama, but Miss Edge appeared to have more to say. I do hope so. We have met twice already. He is dashing and honourable. Miss Edge paused as if considering something, her hand covering her mouth in a nervous gesture. It seemed more rehearsed than reflexive. It is a shock he was not married already, but I suppose his absence from town may account for that. I can certainly understand that, Diana volunteered. The similarity between her position and Miss Edge's was surprising. We must be steadfast. If his conduct is gentlemanly... I am sure there is no terrible issue that has caused the delay. Of course, Miss Edge replied innocently. I do not think he would ever truly act dishonourably. Though he is so kind, I do fear that others may take advantage of him. Diana smiled politely, but her thoughts had begun to wander. She imagined that Arthur would speak to his parents about her perhaps after he called on her properly for the first time since he had visited with his parents. Arthur was an upstanding gentleman, but Diana knew his sense of duty came before anything else. If his parents did not believe Diana to be a good match, it was possible that Arthur would withdraw from his promise to wed her. 
could I withstand losing him again? Diana feared another disappointment would break her heart beyond repair. If she could not find happiness with Arthur, there was nothing left for her but to finish her days in solitude. I do not wish to pry, Miss Edge said politely, but I could not help but overhear the end of your previous conversation. Are you engaged in private matters as well? They would not be private if I told you, Diana reminded her. Miss Edge's smile wavered. Diana could not tell the truth behind it, but she suspected the young woman might have been insulted by the censure. Of course, I did not mean to be rude. You have not made a terrible misstep, Lady Lily reassured her starkly, though I do wish to hear more if Miss St. Clair is willing. Diana considered a polite refusal. After all, she did not know Miss Edge well. However, considering Miss Edge's interest in another man and her similar predicament, Diana felt somewhat comforted that her words would not leave the circle of their conversation. Well, as I was saying, I hope that his courtship is prompt. I do not wish to be indecent, but I fear that postponing any further will complicate matters, Diana explained. Miss Edge's eyes widened innocently. How so? If he conducts himself properly, there is no need to rush, is there? He has been away for some time. Diana said carefully. If he is pushed to accept another woman, I fear his sense of duty will turn him away. It would be incredible if your love could transgress the usual dictates of society, Miss Edge replied. She sighed, her eyes downcast. However, I agree that duty is paramount. If he must do his part by marrying another woman, there is nothing that can help it. That is not a comfort. Lady Lily exclaimed. No, she is correct, Diana said quietly. Despite her desire to believe otherwise, she knew it to be true. Besides, if he is honourable, he will do his duty, and I could not ask otherwise from him. It is not a dishonour to simply choose another woman, Lady Lily pointed out, waving a hand dismissively. That is a gentleman's prerogative. Now excuse me, I must call for more tea. Diana watched her friend retreat. Miss Edge's words had tempered her joy at having found Arthur once again, but she was determined to believe the best of her situation. Despite her fears, Diana would trust in Arthur. He was an honourable man, and she knew he would not act in a way that would damage either of their reputations. I believe Lady Lily does not entirely grasp the situation, Miss Edge ventured, but I absolutely do, Miss St. Clair. I do hope you can entrust your worries to me. Diana did not want to agree, but she felt it would be rude to dismiss the young woman. She settled for a polite smile as she replied, Yes, it seems we have similar circumstances. Miss Edge carefully folded her hands in her lap and leaned in closer, her voice lowered. I do mean what I say, Miss St. Clair. Those of us who have experienced a true love may rely on one another. If there is ever anything you do not trust to tell anyone else, please remember that I am here. I will, Diana promised. Perhaps Diana was too suspicious of Miss Edge. She seemed like a proper young woman, despite her somewhat mischievous and dramatic demeanour. Besides, Diana knew she had been similarly inexperienced at the same age. It would be nice to have someone to confide in, Diana thought. She would give Miss Edge a chance and perhaps it would serve them both well. Chapter 7 Arthur escorted his mother on her morning walk early Friday morning. His mind was elsewhere and more than once he felt the pressure of his mother's hand on his arm, reminding him to pay attention to the others walking the same path. Arthur, you are quite distracted, Lady Hyatt exclaimed. It is as if I am walking alone or with a very small child. I apologise, Mother. Arthur patted her hand with his, tearing his eyes away from a nearby rosebush that had enticed him to indulge in his memories. I have much to think about. Whatever has occupied you so completely? Lady Hyatt asked, concerned. You have only just returned, and I hardly recognise the man beside me. Matters of marriage and duty, 
Arthur replied cautiously, it is best spoken of in private. Perhaps when we return home. I should think so, Lady Hyatt replied, disquieted. She hesitated before adding, I am pleased that you have turned your attention toward having a family of your own. Perhaps my efforts were not in vain. Arthur was aware his mother was probably speaking of Miss Edge. He hoped to cautiously explain his true intentions and perhaps bring up Diana's name. But before he could, Lady Hyatt made a noise of shock. Oh, what a lovely surprise, Lady Hyatt announced. I did not expect to see you, Lady St. Clair. Lady St. Clair stood before them, with Diana at her side. Arthur immediately moved to greet them, his heart soaring at the sight of Diana. Lady St. Clair, he said. He turned to Diana next, wishing he could take her hand to kiss it. Miss St. Clair, it is truly a pleasure. Diana's cheeks coloured as she turned her eyes downward, bowing politely. Lord Hyatt, once again, it seems we are in one another's company. A clear intervention of providence that I do not regret, Arthur replied. Lady Hyatt laughed brightly. It seems our families are intertwined, dear friend. I suppose it is a matter of course that we should meet before we have planned to do so formally again. But of course, Lady St. Clair smiled. Her gaze flicked over Arthur and he felt completely transparent. He wondered if she knew of his intentions or if she was simply suspicious of his interest in Diana. Arthur did not listen as his mother spoke to her friend. He had eyes for Diana only, and she was a lovely flower in the sun. The light colour to her cheeks was rosy and delicate, and her blue eyes were as soft and bright as the morning sky. There was no way for Arthur to explain his desires. He wished he could return home immediately to pen Diana a letter in which he confessed everything, but he knew it would be a risk he could not take. He did not want Diana to be placed under scrutiny. Have you acclimated to town once again, Lord Hyatt? Diana asked. Arthur was careful to reply after a moment of silence, hoping he did not seem overexcited. I believe that I have, in large part thanks to the season. It is soon enough that I have been able to attend several functions to prepare myself. It will certainly be one to remember, Diana said. She lowered her eyes politely. The hosts this year are lucky to have gained a respectable man. The Lord and Lady Templeton will be hosting a garden party tomorrow, Lady Hyatt noted. Lord Templeton's son has also returned, I believe. It will be nice to visit family. We will be certain to see you there, Lady St. Clair replied evenly. We will have to meet again soon, Lady Hyatt. Certainly. Lady Hyatt smiled as they began to part ways. Have a lovely morning, Lady St. Clair. You as well, Lady Hyatt? Arthur was silent as he escorted his mother further down the path. He hung on every word Diana had said, despite the shortness of their exchange. He wished he could have offered to accompany her and her mother, yet he appreciated the opportunity he had been afforded. Despite the surprise of the unexpected meeting, Arthur believed he had conducted himself well. There was little he could do to pursue Diana at the moment. He turned his thoughts instead to extracting himself from the position his mother had neatly manoeuvred him into. You spoke of your efforts before, mother, Arthur began. Lady Hyatt laughed quietly. Yes, I'm sure you understand me. If you're speaking of Miss Edge, yes. Arthur replied carefully. He was unsure of how to proceed. He had left home before he had experienced much of courtship. Arthur's only experience was with Diana, and their love had felt so natural and true that he had hardly thought about it. With Miss Edge, Arthur was keenly aware of the many ways in which he could make a grave mistake. Lady Hyatt sighed. Well, judging by your expression, I assume this will not be a pleasant conversation. I am sorry, mother, Arthur began. He wanted to explain his position, but his mother shook her head. What for? 
you have conducted yourself well. Perhaps but I have been dishonest with you, Arthur said tentatively. Lady Hyatt came to a halt at the side of the path. Tell me if this will upset me, Arthur. I cannot faint in the middle of the park. No, mother, no, I have not done anything untoward, Arthur said quickly. He was unhappy that his mother could even suspect as much. But he understood the impact he had on his family's name. Good. Then be clear about your meaning, and do not be uselessly dramatic. I have an interest in a woman I knew in the days before I departed. Lady Hyatt was silent. She gazed into the distance, her eyes unfocused. In what way did you know this young lady? I never approached her without a chaperone, and our words were exchanged in public places, Arthur reassured his mother. We met frequently at balls and parties, but I did not pursue her for fear of tarnishing her reputation. You were wise to do so, Lady Hyatt said quietly. Arthur did not pursue the subject. He was aware of how monumental the information must have seemed to his mother, and he allowed her time to consider it. Even if Arthur's parents agreed to his decision, it would take time and the proper conduct to pursue Diana. He did not wish to wait or make her wait, but he knew it was of utmost importance to court her in the most respectful manner. Even if he had already once spoken to her frankly, when she was all but unchaperoned. Where then does your interest lie? Lady Hyatt finally asked. Arthur was unsure of himself. He did not know whether telling his mother Diana's name would help or hinder his cause. He decided he had few choices. It rests with Miss St. Clair, Arthur confessed. Lady Hyatt did not seem to understand at first. Her brow furrowed, and she turned to gaze down the path they had walked, as if she could still see Miss St. Clair standing there. Are you certain? Lady Hyatt turned back to her son, her expression still puzzled. I mean no disrespect to Miss St. Clair. I only mean that you have only just returned, and there are many young women that you might be interested in. It is not sudden, Arthur defended. As I have said, we were acquainted before I left. My conduct with her has been entirely proper, and I am simply interested in pursuing the matter further. Well, I suppose it is not a proposal. Lady Hyatt murmured. She was still preoccupied, her eyes turning again to the path. There is no harm in supervised visits. Precisely. I only thought it would be proper to explain to you so that Miss Edge does not have the wrong impression of me, Arthur said. He hoped his meaning was clear, and from the sudden realisation on his mother's face he knew it was. Lady Hyatt's expression was grave, as she considered her son. You understand Miss St. Clair is not of the same debut season as Miss Edge. It was a polite way to remind Arthur of Diana's age. He expected as much, but he was still incensed to be reminded that Diana was technically not a young woman any longer. I am no young man, Arthur replied confidently. I have given it much thought, Mother. It is not improper to be of the same age. If anything, my experience has left me interested in someone that is of a certain maturity. Well, I am sure I do not need all the details, Lady Hyatt replied. Her eyes were narrowed as she appraised her son. You are set on this course? I have always been. Arthur hesitated to reveal more, but he felt it necessary to prove his dedication. In my years away, I considered my actions. I imagined whom I might pursue when I returned. Lady Hyatt sighed. That is romantic, Arthur. But you must understand the ramifications of your choices. I do. Believe that I have considered this in detail, and it is not a whim I have followed for five years. At times Arthur had wondered whether he could forget Diana. He had told himself that he might meet an unfortunate fate while he was away, and he should not have held her in expectation for his return. 
No matter how often he attempted to forget Diana's face, however, Arthur could not drive her from his mind. Each flower he encountered during his travels reminded him of her, and every sweet note of music seemed to transport him to the ballrooms in which they had first become acquainted. I was of the impression you had a pleasant relationship with Miss Edge, Lady Hyatt finally confessed. I expected that you meant to pursue her hand in marriage. Her family was certainly interested. I do not mean to turn away a proper young woman, Arthur said, but it is not fair to her, nor is it fair to Miss St. Clair, for me to be disingenuous about where my heart lies. Lady Hyatt sighed. Finally, a smile graced her lips once again. You are a kind and wonderful son, she said. I believe your intentions are pure. It is only my experience that lends me hesitation. Arthur smiled. He had no misconceptions about his mother's hopes for him. She only wanted the best, and he had no doubts that she had arranged his introduction to Miss Edge as a way to ensure his happiness and future. There was no denying his truest desires, however. Arthur could not forget Diana, and he did not want to push her aside simply because of the passage of time. If anything, time had shown Arthur that Diana was the only woman that he would ever want or need. So long as she felt the same, he would act in such a way to honour her and make her his wife. I appreciate your help in this, mother, Arthur finally said. I have waited to speak with you and father about this matter, as I wanted to ensure that Miss St. Clair was not averse to revisiting the days that have long since passed. I will speak with your father, Lady Hyatt submitted, though I cannot guarantee what he will say. The most I can do is speak to him frankly and ask that he understand. That is all that I ask of him, Arthur said patiently. This is a mistake that is mine to make, though I do not think it is one. You are awfully certain, Lady Hyatt finally said, turning back toward the path before them. Let us see what your father says first. Then you may pursue Miss St. Clair until you have your answer. Scan the QR code or click on the link in the description to read the full book. The full audiobook will be available on YouTube in a few days. What did you like the most? Comment below and share this video on your social media and with your friends. Watch one of the following videos. Subscribe to our channel like this video and hit the notification bell to not miss any new audiobooks. Thank you for watching.